punched in the back of a pickup truck. A football stadium in Afghanistan. A place of entertainment turned into an execution ground. Secret pictures showing scenes the country's rulers want to keep hidden. We're trying to uncover the truth behind Afghanistan's veil of terror. Khyber Pass, gateway to the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan. I'm trying to find out more about one of the most repressive and mysterious places in the world, Afghanistan. is ruled by the Taliban, an Islamic militia. In 1996, these former religious students seized power and imposed a strict Islamic regime. They've made the headlines by blowing up the country's ancient Buddhist monuments. What the world doesn't know is what they're doing now to their own people. For me, this is personal. I was raised in Britain, but my father was an Afghan. And I grew up with a very different vision of Afghanistan. He used to tell me stories of my family's homeland, a place called Parman. He described gardens and fountains, a kind of Eden. I've never been to Parman. Now I'm trying to get there. I'm hoping my journey will help me understand what's happening to my father's country. My journey begins this side of the border, in Pakistan. I find a human disaster. These are the biggest refugee camps in the world. Almost four million Afghans have escaped two decades of war. But thousands more are now fleeing famine, drought and their own government, the Taliban. Everyone has a story to tell. I was hiding in the bread oven. I could see the Taliban, but they couldn't see me. They asked my father for a huge sum of money, or else they'd kill him. He said, where could I make that much money? I'm a simple shopkeeper. And then they kill him. I asked these children how many of their parents were killed by the Taliban. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven out of ten of their parents killed by the Taliban. Three quarters of Afghan children have lost a relative since the Taliban took power. But it's also from the most vulnerable children and women that the first voice of protest has risen. This is Rawa, the Revolutionary Association of the Women of Afghanistan. They're everything the Taliban hate, highly political, left-wing Afghan feminists. They're determined to fight for human rights in a country where women have been forced under the veil. But the Taliban are powerful even in Pakistan. 
Suddenly, the Taliban supporters appear from nowhere. We're behind me an extremist Islamic group, and they're shouting, long live the Taliban, and it's driven the women crazy, but the police have just kept both away from each other. A peaceful demonstration turns into a street battle. The police struggle to contain the crowd. In seconds, there's tear gas everywhere. A moment later, the police lose control. More and more Taliban supporters appear. Rawa run for their lives. Afghan brutality spilling out onto the streets of Pakistan. What could drive such aggression? Why terrorize this one tiny opposition group? to participate in the Olympic Winter Games. But in the end, we decided to support the real athletes and stick to the things we do best, like defending your money with a leader in photo security check cards and credit cards. He's all the rage with children. He's not scared of anything. Now he's box office magic. It was really pricey. Will they make the money back? Absolutely. But who is the wildly popular Harry Potter this week on People in the News? Today on CNN. Tis the shopping season. How will a surge at the register rally our economy? We get the answers from Treasury Secretary Paul O'Neill on Late Edition with Wolf Blitzer. Noon Eastern tomorrow. You can depend on CNN. at their secret headquarters. Rawa tell me they have an underground opposition network inside Afghanistan's capital, Kabul. Their operatives use hidden cameras as their most powerful weapon.
pictures reveal the destitution created by the world's most stringent restrictions on women. They show women forced to beg on the streets because their own government has forbidden them to go out and work. Their children go hungry. This is no ordinary third world poverty. It's been created by the Taliban's social policies. But Rawa's most shocking images reveal how the Taliban have turned sports stadiums into execution grounds. In today's Afghanistan, you can be executed for anything from adultery to murder, even for prostitution or homosexuality. Rawa have risked their lives to take these images. Spin Buldak border crossing, Pakistan. It's taken over two months to get visas for Taliban-ruled Afghanistan. The Taliban have all but closed the country. Most of all, they want to keep out journalists like us. No, 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 no. No? No. No filming? No. No filming. But with one last Pakistani checkpoint cleared, we're finally in. I'm now getting closer to Pakman, the family home I've never seen. Our first stop is the southern city of Kandahar. Everywhere on the streets are men in black or white turbans. Some are from a place called the Ministry of Vice and Virtue. It's not a joke, these are the feared secret police. Hi, 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 hi. It's almost impossible to film here. We've been told we are not allowed to have a camera to film anything at all. Uh, so we're trying to film covertly from inside our van. Over there is the Ministry for the Prevention of Vice and the Promotion of Virtue. And these are really the religious police. Simply driving past the headquarters of the Taliban's notorious secret police is enough to terrify our translator and us. Their spies watch everything, as we soon find out. Sorry? Minutes after arriving in Kandahar's marketplace, we're in big trouble. You want me to shut it up? The Taliban arrest us on the spot for filming illegally. We switch to a hidden camera. We find ourselves heading back to the Ministry for Vice and Virtue, the very same building that terrified our translator earlier. This time, we go straight through the gates. Things don't look good. But then our arrest is interrupted. It's time for the most feared men in Afghanistan to say their evening prayers. What is? Sorry, 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 sorry. Only then do they lead our producer inside. But not me. Women are banned from the building. Can I not be your guest here? Oh, yeah, to watch it. No, Mehman. Sorry. Oh, Mehman, Mehman, Mehman. Mehman, she. The last person the Taliban caught filming them secretly was thrown into jail. An hour passes. But this time, we've been lucky. They demanded all our tapes of us, they demanded to know what we've been filming, they'd obviously been kicked off, they knew we'd been filming as a market. Um, we managed to slip them a blank tape and they've let us go, but uh, they're escorting us back home. We couldn't have had a better illustration of the power of the religious police. 
They've made it clear we should get out of town. Next day, we hit the road for Kabul, Afghanistan's capital. It responds to the power of your voice. It lets you focus on the road ahead. OnStar Personal Calling. Call Commissioner Gordon. With the safety of hands-free dialing, you can concentrate on more important things, like driving. Gordon here. I'm on my way. You could win a walk-on part in the next Batman movie or an OnStar-equipped vehicle. Go to OnStar.com. This holiday, stay connected to the people who matter most. With the shared advantage plan from AT&T Wireless, you get unlimited local calling between plan members. So dad could talk to mom, mom could talk to the kids, and the kids could talk to each other as often as they like. Start with two phone lines for $59.99 a month and add up to three more for only $9.99 each. You can also get up to five free phones with nationwide long distance included and plenty of minutes to go around. All for life. Visit attwireless.com today for a gift that will have the whole family talking. It's 6 p.m. Do you know where your CEO is? Chances are they're talking to Lou. Lou Dobbs Money Live, weeknights, 6 Eastern, on CNN. Get the news and latest developments from Washington, D.C. with John King. Another reason why you can depend on CNN. It's time to take on the establishment. Turn off the phone company and turn on Cox Business Services. We're the better alternative. Reliable phone connections and high-speed internet access with local customer care that promotes true inner peace. Right now, get a flexible telephone and internet package for one low price. Call toll-free or visit us online. Cox Business Services. Plug in. Do business. I'm honored to speak on behalf of a great American institution of charity and compassion, the United Way. Strong communities provide hopeful answers to many problems. Mentors for children, treatment for drug addicts, shelter for the abused and homeless. All of us have a responsibility to promote these efforts, now more than ever. I encourage all Americans to support their local United Way to help build and rebuild communities we can be proud of. This is CNN. Arriving in Kabul, Afghanistan's capital, is a shock. This damage was caused by civil war before the Taliban came. When they took over, people hoped life would get better. But four years later, nothing's been repaired. We've come to a city without buildings, without joy. The Taliban say they have other priorities. The rest of the world has misunderstood us. There used to be no law. In the past four years, we've brought law and order. Our government has disarmed the population, brought security, improved commerce, and created jobs. We have proved we are a proper government. There's no sign of jobs, but there's plenty of security. Every few hundred meters we pass roadblocks. They're decorated with confiscated cassette tape. Even music has been banned. We try to film it. That's fine, well, we'll just actually get the shot. That's cool. And again, it seems we're in trouble. So is there a problem? They force march us into a derelict building. Thank you. 
Inside, we find a Taliban security chief sitting with his friends. To our surprise, they invite us to tea. Then, unexpectedly, they ask us to film them. This time, far from detaining us, they take us on a tour to boast about their rigid control on the city. The man in the front seat is a head of Taliban intelligence in the capital. I know he's responsible for the information which has led to the hanging of at least two men. And now he's driving me through the district in Kabul that he's responsible for. My duty is to watch for opponents. If they enter this area, I can find out about it. If any opponent enter this area, we find them and arrest them within minutes. Who exactly are you looking for? Anybody, Afghan or foreigner, who is involved in political activities. Anybody who even speaks against the Taliban or causes problems for them. We arrest these kinds of people. We escape the hospitality of the intelligence chief. Now we're heading to the place where some of his victims have ended up. This is where the Taliban enforce their extreme religious laws. It's the symbol of their repression, the football stadium. It's an extraordinary feeling because I have actually seen pictures of women being shot at this penalty area here that we're just coming up to and uh, also have seen pictures of men being hung from this goalpost. This stadium was actually financed by the international community uh, to try to raise the spirits of the people of Afghanistan after the Taliban took power. Um, instead of using it for football, this is now their public execution ground. I was thinking what it must be like when these stands are all full of people and they're all shouting and screaming and the Taliban drive their victims in through the entrance and do a parade around. And the women who they executed here were not allowed to take off their veil, so they must have had hardly any idea of what was happening. They must have been very confused. They must have been hearing the crowd screaming. They were pushed up onto the penalty line and made to kneel down. Just the concept that you can pack a stadium with people baying for the blood of another human being and then shoot them on the pitch. The Taliban leadership is proud of the things they do here. The football stadium is a place of leisure, a place for playing games, a place for joy. When justice is done on behalf of a victim, that too is a joyful event, which brings order and security to society. But the international community paid for a football stadium. They, they wanted to, oh, the Afghan people to play football there. Instead, you were executing people there. I'll make the international community an offer. In Afghanistan, everything has been destroyed. If they help us to build a separate place suitable for carrying out executions, we have no problem with that. When they criticize us ten times, they should at least help us once. They should build a place for executions and get financial support so that football can be played at the stadium and our work can be done as well.
of America, we really wanted to participate in the Olympic Winter Games. But in the end, we decided to support the real athletes and stick to the things we do best, like defending your money with a leader in photo security check cards and credit cards. something of attraction. I know something of power. The new car, I think it knows too. The all-new Lexus ES300. A new world of luxury. Americans are asking, what is expected of us? What is expected of us? What is expected of us? We ask you to live your lives. Do your business. Do your business around the country. Fly and enjoy. And enjoy America's, America's great destination. Take your family. Take your family. Enjoy, enjoy life. The way we want it to be enjoyed. Greatness is found. Greatness, Greatness is found. When American, American character. And American courage. courage. American courage. Can overcome Over American challenges. challenges. And we will. And we will. How precise can changing a hearing aid battery get? Oh, this precise. Introducing the Energizer Easy Change, the world's first hearing aid battery dispenser. Simply turn the dial, then slide the battery out to activate. The magnetic arm holds the battery securely for precise placement every time. No matter what hearing aid style or battery size you use, the Energizer Easy Change, it changes batteries precisely. New America Online version 7.0 is here. There's never been a better time to join. Call now for our best offer ever. 7.0 is filled with a whole bunch of new stuff. Bing! You got your instant messages. It's fun getting email. You've got mail. Call now, sign up over the phone, and be online in minutes. Customer service is great. 7.0 makes it even easier. Call 1-877-265-0200 now to join AOL and get a risk-free special offer for new members. What are you waiting for? America Online. So easy to use, no wonder it's number one. Tis the shopping season. How will a surge at the register rally our economy? We get the answers from Treasury Secretary Paul O'Neill on Late Edition with Wolf Blitzer. Noon Eastern tomorrow. You can depend on CNN. On September 11th, our world changed. Now, as events unfold, CNN is there. From Middle America, to the Middle East. With 43 bureaus, CNN is the world's number one news source. CNN connects you to the world and to a world of information. From the U.S. and overseas, CNN's team of over 300 dedicated journalists report on the issues that impact our lives, political strategy, financial security, personal safety, with unparalleled perspective. We are CNN, and we are here. Now more than ever, you can depend on CNN. Afghanistan is a world away from the liberal Islam I grew up with. So far I've been an outsider here. Now I want to get inside the world of ordinary Afghans. It's time to meet up with the secret opposition network of Rawa, the women's group I met in Pakistan. I'm going undercover. From now on, I'll live the life of an Afghan woman. I'll have to go alone and leave my crew behind. As a foreigner, I do at least have a little bit of protection. Uh, as an Afghan, which I will be travelling as, um, I have no protection at all. 
but I can enter the Kabul foreigners don't see. Under the Taliban, the World Food Programme must help feed up to a third of the city's population. I discover a man selling scraps of bread with mold on them for animal feed. A woman buying a handful at a time. But she's not feeding it to animals. She grinds it up for her seven children. She's invited me home to film her, to tell me that since the Taliban stopped women going out to work, she has to beg. There is nobody in the household who can work, and so there is no money. I give this dry bread to my children to keep them quiet. It's all we have to eat. The Taliban say they encourage women to stay at home for their own protection. But women aren't just forbidden to earn a living. They're deprived of access to basic things like medical care. Malalai Gynecological Hospital. A higher percentage of women die in childbirth in Afghanistan than almost anywhere in the world. And one in four children die before their fifth birthday. I find filthy wards and lavatories. There's barely a doctor to be seen. Few medicines. This is what happens when one half of society has been shut down. The government of Afghanistan is trying to make women redundant and they don't want them to work in the hospitals at all. In this hospital, there are not enough female doctors as a large number of them have fled Afghanistan. This has made the condition in the hospital very poor. My escorts, Rawa, are one of the most wanted opposition groups in Afghanistan. Even travelling by taxi could blow my cover. Taxi drivers act as Taliban spies. Now Rawa are taking me to see their riskiest activity. Not a bomb factory or undercover newspaper. Just a class for girls. The Taliban have made no education available to girls over the age of 12. Every woman in the room is breaking the law. All our courses have to be secret in underground because of the Taliban. If they find out, they could hang us all. All our girls are left uneducated because of their cruelty. I used to be a teacher in a school. I was made redundant after the Taliban stopped women from teaching. Excluded from every part of society. But some women are still holding on to their dignity. I was led past overflowing sewers through what were once luxury apartment blocks. My destination, the most subversive place of all. I've been invited to a secret beauty parlor. If they're caught, these women will be imprisoned but they still paint the faces they can never show in public. This is a form of resistance. We are defying the Taliban. It means that whatever the circumstances, we will carry on doing things we want to do, like studying, doing our jobs, you know, all these things. Women trying to keep life normal in a world gone completely mad. That was the image Rawa left me with. If you're living here, the trivial things that are imposed on people lead to serious things that are imposed on people like torture, death, execution. 
there are no minor freedoms, but there are no major freedoms either. And this is really an incredibly serious, terrifying place to be if you're an off-gun. But I was soon to discover just how terrifying life under the Taliban can be. Mass murder was committed by the Taliban in our village, in our district. <coughs> this man has just fled from Yakalang in central Afghanistan. He's telling me that when Taliban fighters took his village last month, they massacred 150 civilians. This footage was filmed by locals in the same village a few days later. It shows the hospital smashed and devastated. And mass graves. The bodies of civilians executed. Some of them in truly horrific ways. From my own family, 11 people have been killed. There was a boy of 17 or 18 whom they even skinned. They skinned his head. The Taliban, they skinned him with knives and bayonets. I even saw it with my own eyes. Then those of us who had survived the killing got together and went to collect our dead. We picked up and removed the dead with the help of women and old men. The man I spoke to is now safely in Pakistan. But was his story unusual or part of a wider pattern of atrocities? Take pictures. Then take them anywhere with new transferable memory cards. Buy a select digital camera or camcorder from Panasonic or an expandable Palm handheld today and get a free 16 megabyte SD memory card. Superstation premiere. Somebody's dumping some dangerous toxic waste out here. I want to see if I can stop it. Every town has a secret. Some people don't know when to quit. This one will kill you. Steven Seagal, Chris Christopherson, the Superstation premiere. Tell your boss I'm coming to get him. You know, on second thought, I'll tell him. Fire down below. 8 Eastern, 7 Pacific, tomorrow on TBS Superstation. He's all the rage with children. He's not scared of anything. Now he's box office magic. It was really pricey. Will they make the money back? Absolutely. But who is the wildly popular Harry Potter this week on People in the News? Today on CNN. Tonight, Christian Amanpour reports live from cover with the latest updates on the hunt for bin Laden, the military campaign, and the fate of the Afghani people. A CNN special report live from Afghanistan. 8 Eastern, only on CNN Tonight. Tis the shopping season. How will a surge at the register rally our economy? We get the answers from Treasury Secretary Paul O'Neill on Late Edition with Wolf Blitzer. Noon Eastern tomorrow. You can depend on CNN. Up until 1996, the Taliban held only a fraction of the country. Now they have almost all of it. But there are still people opposing them, 
They're an alliance of different ethnic groups. They're fighting a last ditch battle for their own culture and identity. And they claim that the Taliban have massacred civilians in this area, away from the eyes of the world. We finally arrived at the northeast corner of Afghanistan. The opposition forces have been pushed right back to here. And the front line is there, right directly behind me. There are plumes of smoke going up there at the moment because there is an artillery battle going on uh, between the Taliban front and the uh, opposition front. Uh, we have to try and get up there because these are where our witnesses are likely to be. The opposition forces are barely managing to hold these positions. Their commander points out the Taliban trenches on the far side of the valley. In between lie four villages, caught between the front lines. He tells me that a few weeks ago the Taliban briefly took these villages before being pushed back. The commanders heard disturbing rumours that dozens of civilians have been massacred. Atrocities that have never been reported to the outside world. To find out the truth we must get even closer to the Taliban positions and go down into the valley itself. The countryside here reminds me of the Afghanistan my father knew. There's never been a single Afghan culture. No one version of Islam. It's a mosaic of different ethnic groups. The peoples in this area have lived peacefully, side by side, for centuries. It's a world the Taliban are intent on destroying. We soon come across our first witness. He says that when the Taliban entered his village, Baghe Zahra, they killed unarmed civilians. He describes how he found the bodies of 11 men. There were two bodies in the area where they must have taken them all captive. They had tried to escape and they had been shot on the spot. The others had been taken away to the center of Baghe Zahira. Their hands and feet had been tied and they had been tortured and then killed. He tells me a story of what seemed to be organized violence. Soldiers running from house to house, pulling out any man they found. Shooting on the spot anyone who dared resist. For ten nights they ran wild while the village men were held captive. As they left, they lined up twelve of their prisoners against a wall and shot them in the head. An old man from the same village corroborates his story. As he does so, there's a reminder of just how close we are to the war. A Taliban jet. From now on, our journey will get even more dangerous. Oh, he says there's, he says there's mines over there. We decide to try to get to one of the four villages, a place called Mao Mai. The village is close to no man's land. To get there, we have to cross the Koksha River, a mile upstream from the Taliban guns. No reporter from the outside world has been here to report on these massacres. As soon as we arrive, villagers rush out to greet us. 
They take us to see an old woman called Bibi John. When the Taliban came, she was at home with her two sons, both civilians. They shot him there. It was my little boy who I brought up. The other one they captured and took away. Uh, I was standing here. When the Taliban came, my son was standing over there. He couldn't speak their language, and they shot him. They shot him here in this place. We took his blood and covered it up. It was here we covered over the spot where he died. Then the villagers take us to another house, a place veiled in sorrow. The first person I see is an old man, staring into space. Then I see three girls of 9, 12 and 15 years old. Their father says they've been crying for weeks, ever since the Taliban came to their home. The Taliban told my mother to leave the house because they were going to make it their headquarters. My mother cried and pleaded with them. She said, you have taken my husband prisoner. Where should I take my children in this snow? And then they shot her. I heard the shot. My younger sister was watching from the doorway. She said, they have shot my mother. I ran over and found that she was dead. I ask them how long the Taliban stayed in the house while their mother's body lay in the yard. The Taliban, after shooting my mother, they stayed here for two days. I ask what the men did to her and to her sisters in those two days. They won't say. Newsman with a different way of looking at the story. Join Aaron Brown for Newsnight every weeknight at 10 Eastern. You can depend on CNN. We're bigger because we're better. We're better because we're bigger. Find wall-to-wall -wall savings under the sign at the Irvine Auto Center. Bigger. Orange County's largest auto center features bigger volume discounts every day. More square feet, more square deals on over 5,000 new vehicles and over 1,000 used vehicles. Better. It's easy to compare side-by-side -side with 20 different manufacturers, one convenient location. You know where it is. Find the sign at the 5 and 405 and start saving. Size does matter. We're bigger because we're better. We're better because we're bigger. The Irvine Auto Center. This week, Cox Cable delivers the hits you want on In Demand. Bridget Jones's Diary. Heartbreakers. The Mummy Returns. Along Came a Spider. All this week on In Demand Pay-Per-View, delivered home by Cox Cable. We're developing exciting new ways to prevent and treat childhood onset diabetes. Living proof that what we're doing is making a world of difference. He's the absolute king of home improvement shows. We're going to call this Vila Gold. How are you? He's Bob Vila, and he'll guide you through the ins and outs of beautiful home renovations. So come on home again with Bob Vila, weekdays on TLC. English Beats Dave Wakeling here with a marvellous discovery. Downtown Los Angeles has it all. 
Lakers, Kings, museums, theatre, world-class dining and two nights for the price of one weekend hotel specials. Cultural, sports and family packages with shopping discounts are now available. A little bit of old and new in downtown Los Angeles. Call for special discount packages and spend the weekend with us. This is CNN. This is the time when trust matters most and the world is watching CNN, the only cable news network with the experience to report events as they happen. With anchors Paula Zahn and Aaron Brown in New York, John King in Washington, news making interviews from Larry King and Christiane Amanpour live from the front lines. In this time of change, America and the world turns to the most trusted name in news. You can depend on CNN. Finally, the villagers take us up to a nearby hillside. This is where they took them and killed them. They demonstrate to us how they found seven bodies bound with their own turbans. They say the Taliban lined them up, then killed each with a single shot. The men say that when the Taliban withdrew, they loaded most of their captives into pickup trucks. There was no room for the last seven men, so they simply shot them. I saw the bodies lying like sheep, and I called, come here, they're here. Then everybody came here. All the people came here. Everybody said, that's my father, that's my brother. Then we took them, weeping, we took them home, our brothers and our fathers. We found the same pattern of massacres in village after village. In one community, the local wedding photographer captured the scene on video. The Taliban say no massacres took place, that their enemies have made up evidence like this. I don't accept this, that except for wars that Taliban are killing women and children. Except this is because Taliban commanders are religious figures. They know that except for someone who is fighting a war, be it a woman or a child or regular folks, that they are human beings. They have livelihoods. We believe in Judgment Day. In the graveyards, white flags mark the Taliban's victims. Unarmed civilians, killed not for the sake of Islam, but because they come from a different ethnic group to the Taliban. trenches the opposition soldiers, old men and young boys, are exhausted, unable to protect the villagers or to withstand the next Taliban onslaught. The Taliban claim they're bringing peace and uniting the country, but here they're destroying lives. Like the Afghans I've met, I'm only passing through. But before I leave, I still hope to visit the place my family's from. My father's home. Pohoman. The 
is the first time I've seen Pokemon. It's the place I was told I come from. And I was told that it was the most beautiful place in the world. I was told it was pleasure gardens, there were waterfalls, there were fruit trees. It was a place where people would come up from the capital, Kabul, and have picnics on a Friday afternoon. It was a place of pleasure. These were pleasure gardens. What I found was bombed out. Any wall or building has been bombed. The mountains are here and it's beautiful and the view over Kabul is beautiful, but the gardens are gone. Anything made by human beings is gone. During the Cold War, Afghanistan made headlines across the world. Now my journey's brought me to a land where the government publicly kills its own people. Where civilians are slaughtered and the outside world no longer seems to care. But I have found courage where I least expected it among the poor and the weak. Living their lives as best they can, struggling to survive as best they can. This is their daily victory against tyranny.